Hi, and welcome to the videos for Chapter 4 uh, of Math 181. This is Section 1.1. This is the first of two videos. So the good news is you guys have done the majority of the hard work for the semester. You've learned a lot about functions. You've done the differentiations, uh, all the different rules, product rule, quotient rule, uh, differentiation of logs and the function E. So that's the majority of the hard work. Now we get to start actually applying this. Why do we do all that work? What does it mean? When are we ever going to use it, right? The famous question of math, when am I ever going to use that? Well, in chapter four, this is the applications of differentiation. The answer to the question, when am I going to use this? This chapter will deal with that. And in section 4.1, we're going to be looking at max and min values. So if we're in a manufacturing company and we want to figure out how can we minimize costs, we'll be able to do that with the calculus. If we're trying to find out maximum acceleration rates of a vehicle, we can do that with calculus. Or maybe something as simple if we're like at an art gallery and you want to know what's the optim optimal distance away to best view the photo. Obviously, if you're three inches from the picture, that's not going to give you a real good view. And if you're across the room, it might not be the best view. So this idea of optimization is something as simple as how far away should I stand to, to get the best view of this picture? That again comes down to calculus. So first let's look at a definition. And this first video is going to be a lot of definitions. Uh, and then we'll start looking at um, like Fermat's theorem, some critical numbers. But to begin with, we're going to say let C be a number in the domain D of function F then F of C is we have two possibilities it's an absolute max Key here being absolute, because we'll look at a little diff different option for maximums, but it's an absolute maximum when the value of f on d, so on the domain, or sorry, the absolute value of the max is the value of f on the domain if f of c is greater than or equal to any other value f of x for all x in d. And mathemati mathematically, you might see it written like this. I don't know if your instructor will use this notation, but this is x in d, in the set of d, in our domain. So basically, if I have a function, and if I pick some value, and there's no other value in that function greater than any other x value that I pick, Clearly, that's my absolute max. And similarly, the absolute min is the value of f on d if f of c is less than or equal to f of x Again, for all x in d. So if you have some function and there's no other value that's less than some other value in the function, that's the absolute min. So graphically, what does this look like? So let's say I have some function here. Goes up, comes down, goes back up, comes back down 
or maybe this is my domain. It goes from here to here, and that's it. So the absolute max would be what? Well, the absolute max would be the highest point this function ever gets, which would be here. And the absolute min is what? Well, it's the lowest value that this function ever gets, which would be here. So that's our absolute max, absolute min. We also have another definition. So that was absolute max, absolute min. We also have what's called a local max or a local min. Local maximum, local minimum. So the number f of c is a local max This is when the value of f, if f of c is greater than or equal to f of x, when x is close to c. So now I'm not talking about the entire domain. I'm not talking about the entire function. I'm just talking about some value c if x is real close to that, then that point f of c is bigger than any other value. And I'll show you on the graph what I'm talking about. And we have local min, or local minimum, and this is the value of f if f of c is less than or equal to f of x when x is close to c. So let's go back to this picture, to this graph here. Well, at this point right here, this is a minimum if I'm just looking at, let's say, this area right here. So I'm not looking at the entire domain of the function. I'm just picking this point here. Let's call it C1. So when I'm around C1, say from this from here to here to the left and here to here to the right, well obviously this point is a local maximum. It's the highest point within this little zone that I'm looking at. It's obviously not the absolute max because that's up here, but the absolute max is what? This is also a local max, right? Because if I just look at this range here, well it's the maximum within that local point as well. So the absolute max is also a local max, but within a function you could have local max or local min, right? Because at this point here, this is a local min, so let's call this C2. So if I'm looking at just this part of the graph, obviously this red point here at the bottom of the curve is also a minimum, so this would also be a local minimum. And similarly, the absolute min would also be a local minimum. So that's really just the definition of what's an absolute max. That's the highest value the function ever gets, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's the highest within uh, a certain area if we restrict the interval. And then the last part of video one, we're going to look at what's known as the extreme value theorem. And that says the following, if f is continuous on a closed interval, call it a, b, and by closed interval it, it means what? It has the brackets. So it's continuous on the closed interval a, b. Then, F attains an absolute max
f of c and absolute min f of d at some numbers c and d in the interval a, B. So again, let's go back to our picture here. If my interval, closed interval, is from here, A, up to this point here, B, then there's some numbers C, which is my absolute max, And some number d within this interval, that will give me my absolute min. So it, it could be the endpoints. Maybe you have a graph that looks like something like this. Uh, so here's a, here's b. Well, the absolute max, max is at a, so that would also be the value for c. And the absolute min would be at B, which would also be my value for D. So it could be one endpoint, it could be both, it could be neither. But there's going to be some value C and some value D within that closed interval, which gives me an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum value. So that's the end of video one. Uh, kind of an idea of distinguishing between absolute max versus local max or min. Uh, and then this idea of extreme value theorem that if we have a closed interval, there has to be a maximum and a minimum value within that interval. So come on back, we'll do video two and that'll wrap up the videos for section 4.1.